So where does this leave the Conservative Party? Look, they are actually, the whole party's meeting right now to determine next steps. Will Jason Kenney stay on? The race to replace them, though, has already started. The politicians are jumping in to take the helm, like our guest now, Danielle Smith. Now, remember, Danielle Smith was the former leader of the Wild Rose Party. But in 2014, she and eight members of that party crossed the floor. They joined the Conservative parties under Jim Prentice. They went on to lose the election, of course, to the NDP. Then Brian Jean replaced her. And he's probably going to run against her now to replace Jason Kenney. So they're back at it again. He said then she betrayed the party. Uh, now she's seeking a nomination as a candidate for Livingston McLeod. Boy, uh, it's never over these races. Danielle Smith, good to have you back on the program. Um, what does the fact that Mr. Kenny only got 51% support say about divisions in that party? What it would say is, I mean, the Premier has done a, a great job, I think, representing Alberta internationally on our energy file. I don't, I don't have a big beef with a, a lot of what he's done, but I think that there were a couple of things that he, he didn't meet expectations of members that have plagued him for the last year. One, I think, was on the issue of vaccine passports and vaccine restrictions. He stood tall and strong and said he'd never do it, and then he flipped. And I think that that caused a lot of people to, to question what would happen if we go into the next respiratory virus season. So I think there was a loss, a loss of trust there. But more importantly, I think there's this sense that uh, there's on a lot of files, Ottawa is running the show. And although the Premier's done a great job, I think, of challenging things in the courts, I think there was a bit more of an expectation that with Quebec announcing that it was going to be a nation within a nation and Saskatchewan doing the same, that they wanted to see the Premier take a stronger stance in telling Ottawa to stay in its own lane, especially with the result that came out last week in the Alberta Court of Appeal, where Bill C-69 clearly tramples all over provincial rights. And I, I think that, that, that that's going to feature prominently in this leadership campaign. Uh, Jason Kenney earlier said in a leaked audio that the CBC first obtained, said he was defending his party from, quote, the lunatics, the kooky people, the lunatics taking over the asylum. Mm -hmm. um, how divided is the party when the people that Mr. Kenny labeled as lunatics um, have now ousted him, essentially, and, and th then he's still got 51% of people who actually want him to remain. So what does it say about a party that deeply divided? I think the, the Premier mischaracterized the people who were joining the, the party to, to render their opinion on his leadership. I've been to a number of meetings of groups that are, it's, it's actually quite remarkable. Most of them are moms and dads in the 30s and 40s who've never been involved in politics before. But they watched over the last two years as so many of their freedoms were that they took for granted were interfered with, losing their jobs, not being able to travel, not being able to go see their kids' sports games. And I think there's a lot of people very, very concerned about the impact that this has had on kids. Now, to the Premier's credit, he has been one of the first to move in re reducing restrictions, but I think it was a, a, a little bit too little, a little bit too late. And as a result, there was a, a huge groundswell of support of just, you know, Ralph Klein used to call them severely normal Albertans, and that's what I would look at it too. I think they've been mischaracterized, and I think this now gives an opportunity for everyone to come together and talk about what the new vision for the UCP will be. Okay. Uh, you want to obviously, you're throwing your hat in, I, I have heard, and you've confirmed that. Look, given your history, uh, after you led the Wild Rose, then you crossed the floor, you joined the Progressive Conservatives under Jim Prentice. They got, they got, um, they lost to the NDP. Uh, Brian Jean said you betrayed the party then. Uh, why should people trust that you're the person, uh, you're a person who, you couldn't beat Alison Redford as a Progressive Conservative, you crossed the floor. Why should anyone trust you to lead a united party? Well, I mean, I'm not going to defend what happened in 2014. It was a pretty catastrophic political decision for both Jim and myself. I think we both felt like the province was changing and that by having two competing conservative parties, it would ultimately open up a pathway for a progressive party to come in and succeed. I mean, I don't think at the time we knew it was going to be the NDP, but and it may have had a different outcome if we'd chosen a, a different path then. But I, I think the reality that we're facing today is that the, the progressive vote is unified under the NDP. They've been polling at 40 to 45 percent, having separate parties, and there's four or five or six different parties that have sprouted up in the last year. That's going to be a recipe for another round of, of NDP government. I, I, I wanted unity. I discovered too late that unity was the answer. We went about trying to get unity the wrong way, but in leaping back in, I want to make sure that I'm a voice for unity. I don't want to see this movement split apart after everything that we did right. to bring it together, and that's why I'm running. Okay. Um, how, how long? I know they're meeting right now. Um, 
How long, in your view, should Jason Kenney be able to stay on as premier? I spoke to one of uh, a member, well, a former member, frankly, was booted out of uh, the UCP, but he still sits as, uh, as a member as a, of, uh, in the ledge. He said he's got to go now, like not yesterday. <laughs> Brian Jean says, it's over, Mr. Kenney. You can't stay. We need an interim leader today. Bye-bye. It's over. What does Danielle Smith say? How long should Jason Kenney remain as premier? Well, I know the premier has done a lot of work in trying to um, heal the relationship within our indigenous peoples through his connection with the Vatican and the Pope. And the Pope is visiting in July. And I, I think it would be appropriate for the, the premier to stay on until then if he wants to be the premier of Alberta while that historic meeting and that historic apology tour takes place. So I, I don't see that there's any mad rush to see him removed from the position. There's only a couple more weeks of the legislative agenda. Then we get into the summer season. We're not back into the legislature until October, at which time I would expect that the leadership would be decided by then. So I'd leave it to caucus, but I don't see that there's any, any reason to, to force him to leave earlier than would be appropriate. Okay, interesting. Okay, Danielle Smith, I'm sure we'll speak again as the uh, politics in Alberta radically changed and she's going back in for another shot. Thank you. Thanks, Evan.